Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael, and as well as building this N-gauge model of a rundown West Yorkshire town, I'm also going to be building a model of Bradford Cathedral over the next 12 months. I've finished the card mock-up and I'm about to start work on the nave. But before I did that, I wanted to be sure that I could make the windows correctly. This thing's got a lot of windows, and I want to be sure that I know the technique I'm going to use to get the most out of it. The nave has 18 clear story windows that are recessed deep into the walls, come right down to the top of the aisles, and are different on the north side and the south. If I'm to make the model a success, I'm going to have to make the windows a success. Before I dive into making the model for real, I've made a test window just to see how that might work. This little tiny piece of card has taught me an awful lot about how I'm going to make the windows, and I highly recommend that you do the same if you're about to embark on an ambitious project like this. It's much easier to make a mistake now than when you're halfway through the real thing. So in this video then, let's take a look at what I've put in, what I've left out, and the technique I used to get this window just right. First, there is the recess. The windows are recessed into the walls by quite a distance, making the openings look much wider than the glazing. The stone tracery isn't just flat, it too has an angled edge and a pronounced depth. If I'm to make the windows look realistic, even at this tiny size, I need to capture some of that. And then there is the glazing itself, tiny rectangular pieces of glass in an elegant leaded frame. So where did I start? I started in Inkscape, of course. The free application Inkscape is super for drawing all aspects of my scratch-built models. These windows challenged me, but I got there in the end. The north and south aisles have slightly different roof heights, and the windows are completely different on each side of the nave. Let's take a look at how I drew the north windows. There are two two-centred arch elements, so I started there. I drew a rectangle to the right size, added a couple of circles on top, and then used the Shape Builder tool to leave me with an arch. I decided to leave 0.8mm for the tracery, so I used the Offset Path Effect to widen it by 0.8mm. And then I trimmed away the excess to leave me with just the tracery. Because the aisle roof comes right up to the glazing, I'm ignoring any frame elements on the bottom. I drew three circles with 0.8mm wide lines and arranged them on top of the frame. Once happy with the positions, I turned the strokes, the lines, into paths, a full shape. And then I used the Shape Builder tool to make the lovely circle recess at the top. I used a rectangle and four circles to make the four centred arch surround. And then I arranged the arches inside. I used a grid of lines, just 0.1mm thick, to arrange the elements of the leading. For the double border, I drew lines 0.3mm thick. And then I arranged five circles, with 0.3mm thick lines, into the cutouts of the windows. I moved this off the windows and duplicated it. Then I set the thickness of the duplicate to 0.1mm. With the lines turned into paths, again the shape builder came in handy. I just painted over the part I wanted to keep. Once for the pink, and once for the blue. Once done, I used Path Difference to cut the blue out of the pink, and then I dragged it back. Once that was done, I used the Offset Path Effect again to create slightly smaller versions of the tracery, and this will allow me to build the 3D elements. I used Inkscape's Clone feature, which means I have one master window, and any change that I make to it is automatically updated in all of its clones. I shared some tips about the clone tool in Inkscape with my channel members a couple of weeks ago. If you're interested in behind the scenes videos about what's going on in Chandwell and the Cathedral build, and also some Inkscape tips and tricks that I might not release publicly, then please do consider becoming a channel member. It's a great way to support my channel and the work that I'm doing. I used similar techniques for the three panel windows on the south side. I used much bigger circles to create the shallower topped arch. I arranged circles to create the recesses in the tracery, and circles in a different arrangement for the different style of leading. The drawings of the windows look absolutely superb. Obviously with lines just 0.1mm thick, there's not much chance of actually seeing them, and in fact, you can't see that much at all. But I really wanted to spend time and get the drawings as accurate as possible, because the more accurate the drawings are, the more accurate the eventual model will be, even if a lot of the detail is lost. 
Also, with a beautiful drawing, we can maybe in future get it printed and framed, just like I did with my station building there a couple of months ago. So I think I've done the right thing. I decided to make the walls four layers of half millimetre card thick. My card is slightly thicker than half a millimetre, especially when there is a sticky label in the mix too. So this results in a wall about two and a half millimetres thick. To add the curved recess, I decided I would make the opening in each layer a slightly different size. These would print as simple line drawings to be cut. I find it easier to cut tiny pieces using solidly coloured shapes rather than having to cut around thin lines. So the three elements of tracery, each a different thickness, were printed as grey shapes. This line here is just 0.42 millimetres wide. Let's get it made. I'd been looking at these windows for weeks, filling my computer screen. It's still a shock to see just how small they are once printed. Here's my universal indicator of size, the Lego man, to put it into perspective. The wide arches are printed onto sticky label, roughly cut out and stuck onto some half millimetre grey board. The tracery is printed directly to some 210 GSM white card. I gently and carefully cut the horizontal parts, making sure I'm using an incredibly sharp scalpel. I do the tops freehand. Those lovely circular cutouts have vanished from the print, so I just follow the curve and eventually pick out the unwanted part. But with care, I eventually have three holes with the thin tracery still standing in between. I repeat for the other parts, and I'm left with three rectangles, each containing three holes. With 18 windows on the nave alone, that means there are 162 holes ahead of me to cut out. I trim away the excess, cutting gently so as not to tear the delicate tracery. Once on top of each other, the slight variation in tracery width is subtle but noticeable. The holes in the card are much easier to cut out. There we are, another four holes. Multiply that by 18, that brings the total hole count to 234. These stick on top of each other with PVA glue, as do the three layers of thin card for the tracery. The PVA gives a few seconds before it grips tightly, so I can use my tweezers to get it all nicely arranged. A couple of different sandy shades of paint are used to colour the tracery. The colours blend into each other on the component and this leads to a kind of natural weathering look. I used some coarse ashlar texture from Scale Scene Scratch Builders Yard to cover the wall. I've put a link to the Scale Scene Scratch Builders Yard in the description of this video. It's where I get all of my textures from and they really are fantastic. With a slit along the top and bottom, the stonework just wraps around the edges. This goes on top of the tracery. For the glazing, I decided just to print the windows like this. I used different shades of grey to represent the different reflections you see on glass of this type. The window just glues on top like this. I finally used gloss varnish to make the glazed part appear shiny. Not bad, eh? It's come out better than I hoped. There's a lot of effort in this, there's a lot of cutting and there's a lot of repetition. But the effort doesn't bother me, I really enjoy spending time after work with the scalpel cutting out tiny bits of card. I know a lot of you will say I should get a cutter or a laser cutter or something like that, but no, I'm sticking to my scalpel because that's what I enjoy. Maybe I should have used three layers of card rather than four because that recess is quite big. It's much bigger, I think, than what it should be. So I think three layers of half mil card should make it about right. But once there's eight of these in a row along the nave, it's going to look absolutely fantastic. I'm really excited to look at how that's going to be, to be, to be, to be. If you're interested in seeing the window for real and the mock-up, and also having a guided tour of the cathedral itself, then I'm doing a talk at the Cathedral's Heritage Open Day on Saturday the 14th of September this year, that's 2024. Promises to be a great day. My talk's going to be entitled Smaller Scale, Wider Perspective and I'm talking about my personal journey from when I started Chandwell to, to now building this cathedral. All of the things that I've learned and how I appreciate heritage and buildings much more than I did when I started and what Chandwell and the people who inhabit Chandwell have taught me. So if you're interested in that there are details about how to get tickets which are completely free in the description of the video. So until then then, I hope to see you then. But for now, thank you for watching this video, take care, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>